Fishbowl Thinker Television. Brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. The great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. Toyota Trucks. Moving forward. Hewlett Packard. Vent. St. Croix Rod. And crafting fishing rods for over 60 years. Hello. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. We got a whole different kind of show for you today. Normally here on Fishful Thinker Television, hopefully you've caught the show in the past, you know that we normally feature a lake or a species, maybe even a time of year. Today, we're featuring a technique, and it's a technique that's very near and dear to my heart, and it's fishing a jerkbait. There's an infinite number of ways to fish a jerkbait, and almost anything that swims in fresh or salt water will bite a properly presented jerkbait. And it's something that I've used for years and years for trout to walleyes to bass to stripers and wipers and all sorts of saltwater fish. So a jerkbait is something that's very, very, very near and dear to me. One thing about a jerkbait is it's all in the technique. It's a lot of it is how you work the bait, unlike a crankbait or some other things where you can just throw it and wind it in. A jerkbait really comes down to the guy that's working the rod more than anything else. So uh, stay with us. It's going to be a good show, and hopefully we're going to teach you some stuff that you can use to fish anywhere in the western United States that you fish. So what is this seemingly magic technique we're all excited about? Jerkbait fishing. Jerkbait fishing is something that uh, is almost as versatile as it gets. It's, uh, it's December here in Colorado, freezing cold out. You can see we're all bundled up. It's very cold out here, but I can still get a jerkbait to catch fish. Conversely, summertime, 100 degrees out, high bright sun, I can still get the jerkbait to catch fish. And we're going to demonstrate that today. So get comfortable and uh, hopefully we'll teach you some things that you can use anywhere in the United States that you like to fish to catch some fish. In almost all instances of me working a jerkbait, I'm going to work it on braided line. The reason I work a jerkbait on braided line of some sort, whether it be fire line, uh, fire line braids, super braids, spider wire ultra cast, there's a whole slew of super lines out there. Find one you like and use it for jerkbait fishing because it has no stretch. That means if I snap the rod on this end, it snaps the bait on that end, as opposed to monofilament, which is very spongy and will absorb a lot of the action of that bait, making it less erratic, and therefore, in most cases, less likely to draw strikes. So by using a super line, when I just barely snap the rod on this end, I get an equal snap on the other end. I couple that with an extremely fast action rod. Just the very tip of this rod wants to bend. It does not bend into the butt section of the rod. That makes my working of the bait very precise, very accurate, and easy to cast. Unless I'm fishing a really big jerk bait, I almost always fish it on a spinning rod. And the reason being is they tend to be relatively bulky for their weight, so they don't cast exceptionally well. So a uh, spinning rod tends to be a better choice for me to be able to throw a jerk bait a long ways. And throwing a jerk bait a long ways is a definite bonus because one of the advantages of a jerk bait is I can cover water with it. So I can, between making long casts and fishing relatively quickly, I can cover a lot of water in a hurry. The jerkbait excels at catching a variety of fish. As you're going to see here, we've caught fish, uh, lots of big trout in still waters. You're also going to see that we've been able to use jerkbaits to catch white bass. We've caught wipers, walleyes, largemouth, smallmouth, trout, and a whole slew of saltwater fish. And hopefully over the course of today's show, you're going to see several versions of, uh, of jerkbait fish and several applications that's going to give you some, uh, some confidence to go try it yourself. We've got a 30-pound strand fluorocarbon leader on there, and I've got 15-pound Spidewire Ultracast, same jerkbait setup you've probably seen on Fishful Thinker several times. Fish! Oh, it's a nice one too! Oh my, is this Oh not baby! <laughs> right. He just hung right there! <laughs> we knew! Oh, buddy, that's a good one. It. It. Either that or he's uh, he's foul hooked, but whatever it is, it's big, and you don't think he even really knows he's hooked. It's either It might be foul hooked. All right, we're going to soften the drag a little bit because we don't know. Whatever he is feels really big or he's foul hooked, and I don't know which. He doesn't feel very intelligent. <laughs> oh, nice. It's a nice one. Oh, it's a hog. Hang on, let's make sure he's cold. This is a nice one, and he ate that bait the he's wrong way. Yeah, he's he's going to break off. I'm going to donate a jerk bait here in just a second. Uh, he's uh, He absolutely ate the bait. Okay, get ready. We're going to net him on the next opportunity. 
Okay, come on, he's right under the belt, right there. There we go, oh, yes, well done. All right, so we've made a long cast. We're gonna pull the bait down to the running depth. Got the bait where I want it. Now we need to begin working the bait. The whole secret is in the name. It's a jerk bait. It's not a pull bait or a drag it behind the boat bait. It's a jerk bait, which means that we want to jerk on this end of the rod and snap the rod relatively aggressively. We don't want to just pull it. I don't want to pull the bait along like this. That would be more akin to a true crankbait. What we want to do is snap and basically bounce off the resistance of the lure in the water. How you vary that cadence is what makes all the difference in, in any given days of fishing. So some days, if the water is warm, I might be working the bait real quick like this, constantly, never really stopping it. Excellent way to catch smallmouth. But maybe now it's really cold out, so now we're going to pull it just a little bit and then let it sit there and snap it just a little bit and then just let it hang there on slack line, hang there on slack line. Bottom line, by varying up my cadence, paying very close attention to what I was doing when I got bit is what will allow me to duplicate and catch more fish. But you got to know what cadence you're throwing in the first place. Fish. On the long pause. Now I'll tell you what, the funny thing, that bait is literally sitting dead still and that is absolute textbook cold water walleye fishing or really for bass as well. This fish was not, this bait was not moving at all when this walleye came up and ate it. Literally the bait is sitting completely dead still. Look at the colors on this fish. That's a pretty walleye right there. Now he's not the biggest walleye I've ever seen, but I'll tell you what, he has got some pretty colors on him and that bait was just hanging. Hey, easy there, buddy. Even the cold water like this, they're fairly lethargic. And, but uh, I always keep my pliers handy when I'm jerkbait fishing, and really anything with treble hooks because of the safety issue for one and just the convenience as well. Last thing I want to be doing is looking for my pliers if this fish flops and gets me stuck. So beautiful fish. Easy, 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 buddy. <laughs> we were going to let that one go anyway. A real, uh, a real radical minnow bait in a shiny color like this. Lots of chrome to it. And... Uh, should be a good call today. We'll see how it goes. Try a nice even retrieve. We brought a couple of rods with us today. There's a fish right there. Right off the bat. All right, I don't even know what we got. Looks like potentially got us a nice brown. And that, uh, that's our third cast. I think it's our third cast of the morning. We've got a real nice brown on here. That's kind of what we were looking for. We'll see how graceful we can be about getting him up here now. When you got all these treble hooks, and a brown that's all mad like this one is, you gotta be real careful about how you handle these fish. Fishing and boating is a lot of fun, but you've gotta keep it safe. And the best way to keep it safe is to wear a personal flotation device. Today's anglers got more choices than ever when it comes to choosing a flotation device. A traditional foam-filled vest like this is a great choice, it's the least expensive, and it's also the easiest to use. But a modern angler has other choices. Most notably, inflatable devices like this. This can be worn comfortably all day long. It will inflate on its own if you inadvertently land in the lake, or you can pull the tab and inflate it if you need to yourself. Very comfortable, very easy to wear all day, but a little bit more expensive. For me, a flotation device like this is just a great choice. I can wear it whenever I'm running around in the big motor, and when I stop to fish, I'll take it off. Personal flotation device, you gotta have it. When selecting your jerkbait, part of the versatility lies in the fact that they come in a variety of colors and a variety of sizes. Little tiny, very natural trout looking jerkbait like this, couple inches long, very bright, little trout bait, excellent small streams as you'll see. A little bit deeper running, but still a small bait like this, uh, deeper weed lines get around really clear, deeper trout areas. Um, smallmouth bass love a bait this size as well, white bass love a bait this. If I need the extra depth, I need this bill right here. 
Midsummer smallmouth. Love a small chrome, shallow running, high speed jerk bait. And a bait like this is a really great way to catch smallmouth all summer. It's, uh, it's probably my biggest number bait all summer as a smallmouth guide. Now for deep diving, super suspending jerk baits in the three, four inch range, a bait like this is an excellent cold weather season. This is the bait we're using here in December. This is the size and style of bait. Again, you've got a deep diving lip, fully suspending bait. Really, really good choice here in the winter time in cold water for walleyes, for trout, uh, certainly for smallmouth bass as well. When I'm, when I'm looking at sub 50 degree water, this is hard to beat. What you're looking at right here is a Jerkbait Junkies box of goodies. The difference between them, these all suspend, those all float. And uh, if I need a shallower presentation around shallow bushes, grass lines, anything like that, I'm gonna use all the floating ones. If I, uh, if I need suspending baits to get fish to trigger, I'll use all these suspending ones over here. As you can see, a variety of colors, a variety of sizes. Gives you lots of opportunities to mix it up. One thing that's important to remember about jerk baits, jerk baits are at their best in clear water conditions or relatively clear water, which makes them really good here in the West because we face a lot of clear water. But uh, heavily stained water is the one place I'm not likely to throw a jerk bait. So uh, there's, there's other baits that are, that are better. A jerk bait, really, the fish needs to see it to bite it. Okay, we got the floating rapala. We're going to throw it out there. We're just going to work it, just working it right on the surface and letting it pop up. Got that one. Yeah, there we go. Piece of cake. Got the little light action rod working. Got some gin clear water and some absolutely beautiful little largemouth. Fish right here. Oh, it's a giant. It's a big one. <laughs> That's okay. He played our game. Now, the funny thing, here we got a little spotted bass. So now we have picked up another species. Hey, 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 come here. Hold still. Hold still. There you go. Got us another walleye. Nice walleye. It's funny, everyone thinks that high bright sun is, uh, is not conducive to a jerk bait, a real calm high bright sun day. Now that fish was three quarters of the way to the boat. The boat's <laughs> in 30 feet of water and I get a walleye on a shallow running bait right under the surface. And it just goes to prove that, that uh, you know, the fish at this time of year, in the fall of the year, they don't relate to the structure, they relate to the bait. To the bait. And this bait got me what would be an excellent, excellent dinner if we were inclined to eat one. That would be a good one to eat. He's all scarred up on this side right here. What do you think, Mr. Coburn? That's a nice fish. That's a pretty one there. You got it like that. So a yes, couple walleyes. We're in 30 feet of water. We got bait going right around behind us. Let's go ahead and put this guy back. And you notice, that I don't put, keep tension on the line. As soon as I bounce the rod off the slack, as soon as the line comes tight, I want to throw the slack back at it. Okay, we've talked about the real fast action rod and the low stretch braid. Equally important to the system is this uni knot that's right here. A little uni knot is joining the braided line to this little short fluorocarbon leader, which is right here, which is tied off to my deep diving suspending jerk bait. This leader does a couple of things. One, it disappears in the water, so my suspending jerk bait, which is not moving and is therefore subject to serious scrutiny by the fish, uh, the, the fluorocarbon will hopefully get you more bites. The other thing is it's a little stiffer than the braid, so it doesn't foul the lure as much. If I'm working this jerk bait aggressively, it'll grab this braided line because the braided line is so supple. So by having a little bit stiff piece of fluorocarbon right here, uh, I don't have that problem. I like to keep that fluorocarbon leader uh, long enough that I can make a cast without reeling that uni knot into the rod tip. So I throw it out, pull it down, and then I just let it sit there. Now there's total slack line. If you look at that, there is no tension on that line at all. And the only way I'm going to know I got bit is by having to be very, very, very sensitive line or by watching that line very closely. I'll move it real quick one time and then let it sit there again. We always say that the trout love the jerk bait, and I think in this next segment we're going to prove that between the little tiny jerk bait for the brown trout in Zimpoota River all the way to the huge jerk bait for the big rainbows in the Blue River and the Yampa River, you're going to enjoy this next segment. There's not a lot of guys uh, that do a, a jerk bait type presentation for trout. They love it. 
for somebody from the Midwest that's out here that's been doing bass fishing their whole life, a smallmouth fisherman maybe, or, uh, or uh, somebody that's been fishing for spotted bass, things like that, stripers, you ought to be right at home with a technique like this. The whole key to working this little bait is to be quick with it and erratic. I want it swimming at all times. I am not dead drifting it at all. So I'm either going to be reeling it or I'll be snapping the rod tip, but I want to keep the bait moving erratically. Something like this. Check for your cast. Throw it up underneath there. Just like that. You throw it over there, you give it a few pops like that, and it fishes in that same current seam. Giant floating jerkbait like this is definitely not your grandpa's trout lure, but I am here to tell you that this is an excellent way to catch trout, and they really don't even have to be that big. The whole key is you got to keep it moving. Over the course of this year here on Fishful Thinker, we caught a lot of trout in various rivers working a huge bait like this on relatively heavy tackle. Really fun way to catch the biggest trout you've ever seen. Got a big trout. This makes the argument for the big bait right here. And he absolutely clobbered the big bait. Look at this trout. Oh my goodness, that's a big trout. Woo, doggy. And this is why you use the big baits here because big bait is how you get big bites a lot of the time. Now this, this fish, we're gonna see about getting him over here gracefully. Come on over here, buddy. Oh, <laughs> woo. Look at the size of this rainbow trout. Big old giant floating rapala right there. Don't be afraid to throw the big baits. People think you gotta throw little tiny flies and sure this trout's probably eating two million little bugs, but he'll happily jump on that six inch long minnow uh, knowing he didn't get that big by being stupid. So, and this fish was seriously fired up. I mean, we're talking about a jumper and uh, just an absolute, let's get another look at him. Just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful rainbow. The only difference in my jerkbait setup, whether I'm fishing a little tiny jerkbait this big or a great big honking jerkbait, is the length and power of this rod. They're all fished on braided line. They're all fished with a fluorocarbon leader, whether I'm fishing for pike or brook trout. It's the same setup. I just make sure that my rod is designed to throw the size of bait that I'm throwing. They're all extra fast action rods. Some of them are stiffer than others. That's the only difference from one species of fish to the other and in all the shows you see here today and all the fish catches you see it's a, basically the same rod it's just a matter of sizing it to the size of the bait. Working the jerk bait is all done with the rod. The rod is the whole shooting match. It is not done with the reel. So what I want to do is pull the bait down to its running depth. Now it's at its running depth. Now I'm going to work the bait with the rod. The only thing my reel hand is going to do is manage slack so I don't even have to have my hand on the reel can let the bait suspend. I don't even have to put my hand on the reel. Reel up some slack, let the bait suspend. And what I want you to, to realize is the rod is doing all the work. The fast action rod, the no stretch braid is really what's getting you the bites. The reel's doing nothing but managing the slack for you. Oh, 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 oh. Dude, this is it. Oh, buddy, we're on a shallow flat. We're backed up in a creek arm. Bait's obviously pushed up in here, and there is fish pushing them around. I get the feeling it's only a matter of time before we get our string pulled big time. Fish right here. Oh, baby, I now we're fun. going for a ride. <laughs> We've been messing around with these wipers right here, and uh, working that chrome jerk bait. We're in a shallower bay now. And so I've uh, been working that jerk bait in here and they've been busting all around us, but they've been they've been uh, they've oh, been hard to get close fish. to. Come on up here, buddy. And I got them on 10 pound braid with a fluorocarbon leader in my standard jerk bait setup. You've seen if you've ever watched Fishful Thinker. I appreciate you, Troy, being all ready for that. Let me put that jerk bait down and get a hold of my fish here. What a beautiful Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That is a very beautiful fish. Look at the it's blue. About a, probably about a seven pounder. Yeah, I would say that. That's a good job. Nice. All right. One thing that's really important to remember about a jerk bait is it doesn't taste right. It doesn't really feel right in their mouth, which means they're not going to hold it for any length of time, especially in a cold water situation like this. Really important that you be quick with a hook set. If this fish bites that and you think you've got a bit, boom, hit them quick. 
if the bait, if you got a bite and you miss the hook set, leave the bait in the area. It's very common that if I snap a hook set and miss and just leave the bait sitting there, the fish will come right back and get it. But they're not going to hold it, so you got to be quick with the hook set. Working the bait is definitely in the jerk bait, all in the rod and the wrist. It's not about this, the, the arm or anything. This counterbalance St. Croix right here is perfect because I can just snap the bait and I'm working it with the wrist and the rod and that's it. I'm not using my whole arms to work the bait and I'm not using the reel to retrieve the bait. The reel's just managing the slack. And it doesn't matter if I'm on a faster cadence, maybe I got my hand on the reel all the time because if I was doing a cadence, a faster cadence like this, more of a warm water thing. But on these long pause walleyes we're dealing with right now, let the dino even keep my hand on the reel. All right, now, this bait was out here on the long suspending pause. Now, it's cold, 42 degrees December. We're trying to demonstrate to you in today's show that you can use a jerk bait to catch a lot of conditions and a lot of fish. And we've got ourselves a little walleye pinned up right here. And we're gonna get him in the boat gracefully and try to show you what we've got. Now, Again, it's all, it's all, hey, 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 easy there, buddy. We'll get you off and let go right quick here. One thing about the jerk bait is it's all about the, the versatility of it. Hopefully, you've got some confidence to go out and try jerk baiting yourself. Whether you deal with 42 degree water like this or 75 degree water in the middle of summertime, which I'm dreaming about right now, jerk bait's a very versatile technique. Walleyes, wipers, bass, everybody eats a jerk bait. Get out and try it yourself. As always, thanks for watching Fishful Thinker, and we'll see you next week. Let this little guy go. Boy, I don't know, folks. <laughs> well, this is a little overachiever if there ever was one right here. Hey, 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 hey. And snagged him in the belly, no less. But, uh, oh, guy. I have jerk baits for rent. <laughs> you hear that? He says, I need a jerk bait. I love that. <laughs>